Sushant, thanks so much for joining in. I believe I'm calling out name correctly. It's Sushant Pai, right? Yes, you have, you have got it right. Perfect. Thank you so much, Sushant. Good having you. Thanks for taking the time out. At the onset, uh, uh, happy festivities to you and everybody at Matrimony. Um, but just tell us a bit about the buyback. Is it being done to, uh, to kind of take advantage before the window closes or is this symbolic in nature? Because it's, it's not a very large buyback per se. Yeah. So firstly, uh, thank you for having me here and good morning to all the viewers and happy festivities as well. So first, uh, you know, this is our second buyback. You know, we did the first buyback in 2022. It is a form of a capital allocation policy. It is a form of returning to the shareholders and there are different forms. So this is one form of it, right? So the second thing is, I think our company is a profitable company. It's a debt-free company. We are a cash generating company. So we have about, uh, as of 30th June, we had about uh, 382 crores of cash. So from that perspective, it makes sense. And uh, therefore, buyback has to be seen from uh, that perspective in terms of what we perceive as the value for matrimony.com. The second thing on the shareholder bit, right, uh, there's a little bit of a technicality there. I'll just uh, speak about it. See, uh, you can do up to 25% of the net worth, uh, you know, as buyback. Our net worth is about 288 crores. So we have done the maximum in terms of buyback and the board has approved at a price of 1025. However, since it crosses a particular threshold and it's up to 25%, this also requires shareholders approval and that which we will put forth to the shareholders uh, soon. So from a tax perspective, since this buyback will be concluded only after 1st October 2024, the tax incidence will be by the shareholder and not uh, you know, by the company. So the tax will be borne by the shareholder. However, I think uh, the shareholders have to look at their own tax brackets, uh, look at their own uh, uh, you know, tax laws, because I think different entities have different types of tax. For example, a resident shareholder would have a different type of tax. Uh, institutions, uh, you know, uh, they manage uh, money on behalf of someone else. So they may may have a different view on all of this. So they need to take into account uh, their entities and then figure out their tax. But for us, uh, I think uh, strategy uh, overrides the tax. You know, that's the way I see it. Uh, so for us, it, it makes sense to do a buyback and, you know, tax is only an eventuality out of it. So for us, it makes sense to do a buyback. And that's why we want to do the full uh, maximum amount of buyback by taking shareholders approval. And I think the price is also at a, you know, very fair price. You know, uh, if you, since the price has yeah, also yeah. had a over the last, uh, you know, couple of months to three months. So if you look at the volume weighted average price over three months, it's a good premium of about close to 60%, uh, right? So that's the way to look at this whole buyback scenario. Okay, thanks. Now, we have about seven odd minutes. I would love to understand about the business as well. Uh, Q1, Sushan, you yourself had been not quite up to the mark. And uh, when I look at what's happened, let's say for the last two, three years, right? The three-year revenue CAGR is what, about 7 8% or 9%, right, um, if I'm not wrong. Margins were above the teens. Now they are mid-teens currently. What's happening with the business? Is this, uh, do you expect some changes to happen in the near term? Please fill us sure. in. See, this, uh, this uh, the matchmaking business, right, is highly competitive in nature. You know, there are... You know, there is a lot of competition in the north. We are leading in the south. So it has to be seen in the context of the industry as well. So what we are doing is obviously this is not a business that will grow high uh, double digits and so forth because of the nature of the business as well. So therefore, the what we are doing is that to look at all avenues to bring and uh, to bring make sure that non-customers come into the into our foray, and that's what we are looking at. So for example, if you look at in November 2021, we started something called Jodi in the vernacular language play into nine vernacular languages. That is more for non-graduates, right? So. The point I'm trying to make is that this business requires a lot of innovation day in, day out, be it product features, be it the way you price it, segmentation, and we have to do all what it takes for the growth. So it's a daily business. It's a consumer internet space, right? So our view is that we have to go on bringing newer segments into the foray, and Jody is one example. So earlier we were 
you know, tackling, you know, the mid segment through Bharat matrimony or community matrimony. We also had the elite and personalized services like assisted. And with Jodi coming into play, you know, we have sort of completed the entire pyramid. So continuously, we're looking at avenues. Quarter one, what happened is this year had an unusual number of more number of inauspicious days as compared to quarter one of last year. So therefore, you know, after many, many quarters, actually, or many years, we first, uh, you know, this the, after a long time, I think we had a decline in quarter one. As we see the business, uh, you know, we are looking at various growth levers. Uh, we believe that quarter two is also a, a little muted quarter. It is expected to be a muted quarter. But however, we believe quarter three onwards, you know, we expect a bounce back to happen from quarter three because of the various initiatives also that we are taking. As we speak, you know, we've also launched, uh, you know, in two markets, Tamil Sushant, and Kerala markets. Sushant, I'm sorry, but I have four minutes. So I'm going to try and make it a bit of a rapid fire. Uh, yeah, and maybe we'll have a longer conversation later. So you expect quarter two on, or rather quarter three onwards things to pick up. Uh, I yes. hear that it's a very busy wedding period until May, once the wedding season starts as well. Does that have a direct impact? And therefore, could FY25 numbers look better than the 8-9% average they've clocked in the last three years? No, I don't think so. Because, you know, quarter one has been a uh, muted one. Quarter two is looking muter. And, and therefore, quarter four is traditionally a strong quarter for us. So I don't think we'll uh, be in that sort of a range. Uh, but we will see as it progresses, you know, how we'll do and we want to do better as we go along. But I don't think we will reach that sort of a range. In okay. This year. Okay. Thanks for the candor. The other piece is you're cutting down on advertisement expense as well. Is this, is this an attempt uh, to shore up margins or is it a belief that now you do not need as much advertisement in order to grow? I think the short answer is we are at a very good threshold level of marketing. Right, uh, we okay. have spent about 46, 47 crores, and we are covering all segments. I think that's good for us. Competition intensity has also reduced in certain pockets. So, given all of that, I think we are in a comfortable space in marketing. And therefore, you know, if you exclude marketing, our gross margins are very good. And uh, with that, you know, we hope that margins also will show some improvement as we go along in the year. Okay, uh, but but maybe maybe post quarter three, once the period, once you said that business starts looking up a bit. Yes. Okay, great. You are exploring new business segments, I believe, beyond matrimony. So what's one, what would these be? And two, what's the rationale for doing this? Yeah, so uh, the rationale is basically to take advantage of a consumer internet brand. You know, the decades of experience that we have had, we've been here, in the, we are just entering our 25th year. So to take care of all of those things. And the rationale is our MOA is very, very narrow. So we want to make it a little more, uh, you know, broad. And we have taken an enabling resolution and the shareholders have approved it. What businesses will start will be a board subject. As in when we deliberate to the board, we will announce to the market if there is anything that is in the pipeline. But this is this was a more like an enabling resolution. And we will table it as in when we go along. Oh, so, sorry. So am I understanding that you've made it an enabling resolution, but there's nothing which is decided or on the anvil about a foray into other brand, other other products as of now, beyond matrimony. Yeah, so we are thinking of a couple of things, uh, but as and when it comes, we will announce. So right now, uh, there is nothing to announce. And funding on... It has to be deliberated by the board as well. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, yeah, which is fine. But but funding won't be an issue because I presume you're sitting on a large pool of cash anyway, which is even post the buyback, I believe the cash on hand would be, would be fairly substantial. Yes, yes, we'll still be about 300 crores. Uh, even after the buyback uh, cost. And these businesses, you know, even if we enter into these businesses, these don't require, these are not capital intensive or people intensive in nature. These are all certain product plays, right? So uh, I think we'll, we'll have a frugal investment discipline as well, even if we enter new segments. Yeah, for, for sure. Uh, one statistic, uh, Sushant, and that's my last question, really. One statistic that I really wanted to uh, understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, of course. You... You added what about over two and a half lakh paid subscription, paid subscribers, right? But the average transaction value for matchmaking remained flat. I mean, why is that the case? Is there a price downtick that has happened due to competition? What has gone behind this? See, that's uh, that's our segmentation strategy. Like I told you, right? That Jodi, for example, is priced as low as thousand rupees. And elite would be priced as high as 50,000 rupees. So the mix changes, the, the product uh, things also changes. So it's a segmentation strategy. 
within uh, various communities, within various segments, we price it differently and depend on the proportion of the various products, the price changes. So it's a conscious call on how we price it. Okay, no, but so my, okay, so just extending my last question before we wrap up, could it happen, Sushant, that your number of subscribers and the paid subscriptions move up and, and you might be wanting that to happen even if it comes at a lower revenue per user to you. Could that sure. happen over the course of the next uh, 9 to 18 months? Yeah, so I think our ATV would be very range bound. You know, I don't think there'll be a significant change. But a consumer internet company like us, it's good for paid volumes to go up, right? So it's good to get more people paid into the subscription uh, sort of a thing. So yeah, your, your question is uh, right that it's good for paid subscription to move up. Okay, well, a fascinating space that you guys are in. I all the, wish you all the best for that and more, Sushant. Thank you so much for being patient with my questions. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Have a good day.